Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. We are in the presence of greatness. Another week, another amazing podcast. Another week, another amazing podcast, another day, another dollar, another great guest. Muzukanji, welcome to that Z podcast. Thank you so much. I, if she looks a little bit upset, it's because of us. We're, us? Yeah. Us? Okay, me. What did you do? I was a bit late. I, I overlooked one thing about today. It's, uh, it was you will not blame your child on this. I'm not blaming my child. Watch, watch this guy about to blame your child. <laughs> watch i'm not i'm not Go blaming ahead. my child in any way all i'm saying is look there was uh, some father's day uh event happening at my daughter's school see? and i had to go and dance with my daughter that see the suit. No, that too yeah he's coming from court <laughs> he only wears child a support. suit when he's going to court <laughs> or church <laughs> nah um our guest today though one of zambia's most famous social media personalities and she's a marketer she is into advertising and she's got one of the biggest pages on Facebook. And when I say we're in the presence of greatness, mm. we are in the presence of greatness today. Muizukanji Nakamba, welcome to That's the Podcast once again. Thank you so much. Um, I feel we, like I live under a rock. Really. What? I did not know who she was. Well, she's here now, you know her. Oh, yeah, I'm going to yeah. find out a lot about you. And we are going to find out a I lot. I hope you don't feel offended. So I'm going to represent the very tiny little demographic of people who have not heard of you. So if I ask questions that you feel people should know about you, don't be offended. No, no, no. I understand that I'm not oxygen, so it's okay if someone doesn't know about me. <laughs> You're not everywhere. Yeah, not Muzukanji everywhere. Nakamba. She's not MTN. She's not everywhere you go. Muzukanji Nakamba. Welcome to the podcast once again. And can, can we start first by talking about how big you are on social media how how do you even get to that like if someone is going to say i'm big you are big i don't know your description of big but i'm just this girl trying to survive this girl living her life yeah this girl trying to make ends meet and then i have people that are watching and seeing what i'm doing i'm not that big person what about you makes you interesting do you think that draws people to, to, to watch you, to listen to you. I'm a living testimony. Of? A lot of things. Like? I was almost at a point of uh, committing suicide. I survived. I was uh, once awarded the most ugly person. I survived. You Wait, awarded what? the yeah. ugliest person? Oh, yeah. By who? By who? And why? Society, of course. I was called the ugliest names i survived so i have a number of people that have been watching my journey and then they understand where i'm coming from and they are seeing where i am of course i'm not at a place where i wanted to be but i'm in a better space compared to where i was yesterday and i know that there are people that have been watching my journey and then they just look at me they say okay we know where she's coming from we're seeing where she is yeah and they're following me wait there's wait. nothing special about me was there like some competition where they pitch you against other people and say she's the ugliest on this list or it's just people speaking from a place of hate calling you ugly? I wouldn't describe it as hate yeah. because each one has their own score of thought. If I, if I don't like the, the shirt that you're wearing, yeah. it doesn't mean that the shirt is bad. But if everyone thinks that the shirt is not good enough, that's their opinion. And then I was that shirt that were, was not good enough. Okay? Yeah. So I'm here because of that journey. Speaking of shirts, uh huh. <laughs> Look at that. Plug, uh, plug in an advert while you're at it, eh? How do you uh, like the shirt? It's pretty. Right? I do printing as well, so oh, I, do I you? can. So you and, yeah, you and I will talk. So, yeah. the t shirts are out, and we don't have a pricing for them yet, do we? No, we're actually working on that today. Yeah, we're working, we're working on, on that. It. So, place your orders. There's black, there's white, different designs. We're working on hoodies as well. Most definitely. My apologies for, for this I shameless can do plug. That. I can do that for you. For free? No, I love money. We love money too. <laughs> Mr. Kanji. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a very popular person. And I think before 2020, 
close to nobody knew who Mwizukanji was. And I think for me, I'd rather start from there, get to know who Mwizukanji was before the year 2020. And I keep emphasizing 2020 because so much happened in your life in that year. But can we talk about where Mwizukanji comes from? Because I think that's the story that many Zambians who follow you on social media don't know. Ya Mwizukanji Nakamba. And I, I must emphasize the surname. I know you may not have known this about Namwangas, mm -hmm. the tribe that she comes from. Mm -hmm. She could be Mwizukanji Nakamba and her brother, same mother, same father, will be a Siame. Why? Surname. She'll oh, yeah? explain. She's an Namwanga person. All my brothers are actually Siame, yeah? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, who is Mwizukanji before 2020? Mwizukanji is a girl who was born in the hood. Chawama to be specific. In the what? Chawama. Or oh, oh, in the hood? Mm hmm I thought you said in the woods. I'm like, no, 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 in, in the, the woods. Wood. Okay. Chawama, of course. <laughs> yeah. Chawama Clinic, now Chawama Hospital. The same compound that makes presidents. So I'm sure I'm on the path of greatness. <laughs> ECL. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just consistent with uh, a lot of things. Yeah. I wouldn't want to mention because I don't want to be bashed, but I love my alcohol percentage at some point. So I'm on the right path. We know this, uh, and so, I'll tell you um, why. Oh. Sorry to keep cutting you off. Okay. So I so I met her at nine in the parking lot when we came in. Yeah. So I, I walk over to her car to say hi. You know, the first thing she asks me after she says hi, uh -huh. are they serving alcohol yet? <laughs> I'm like, geez, it's nine. How, how, how much alcohol is in what you're, what you're taking right now? It's actually a mocktail. There's no alcohol But I asked it. you earlier if there's any alcohol. You said yes. <laughs> it was off the you're camera. just messing with me. <laughs> oh, it was off the camera. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. This is a I, girl uh, born in Chawama. Yeah. Of course... Um, grew up in Kafue. Mm. They always say Kafue si yonda yonda ni mulendo, but I survived the hood anyway. Uh, fast forward, um, I don't know how much detail I'm supposed to give, but I don't. Everything, including no, 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 no. shoe size. Everything, type. shoe size size six, in case you want to get me a pair. Nice, nice boots, by the way. Thanks. They were 130 from Salaula. And you're, and you're going to sell them for how much? Considering uh, you're that if kind of business If someone wants them, lady. I can sell them for 2000 That's so over 10,000% profit. I'm a cheapskate, yeah? <laughs> but I love to make profit out of anything. So, uh, fast yeah. forward. This is a girl um, who grew up in Kafue, later moved to Lusaka. I, I'm not ashamed to say I got married when I was quite young. How old were you? Yeah, how old? I was 18. I was still a teen. What? You were legal though, so nothing embarrassing about that. Legal, yeah, but yeah. too young to make certain decisions. But so I why did, did it. You? But I did it anyway. Why? I was in love. Do you feel like love is... It makes us do silly things. Right. Uh, yeah. I was, yeah, I was about to ask, do you think it's enough for a person to want to get married? Just because, because they think love? they're in love? Nah, yeah. it's not. And how long were you married for? Uh, till... I think... Four, five years. That's a that's a stretch. Yeah. You, I think you got married I at eighteen to, and you lost it four years. I need to calculate. Hmm. Okay. It could I have been two to, years, but then it was so horrible. See, it could have felt sit, like four, right? I need to sit down and calculate. But anyway, that's How a story for another day. Uh, and uh, today's another day. No, How no, old no, was no, the guy? No, no. How old was the guy? Uh, he was old enough. He was, 20, 21, he was this 22. cute, handsome guy, you know, with a beard. Oh, stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Were you married at any point in your life? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> no, not, not the beard you have. Like yeah. this one, they like say it's a one for malnutrition, but then there's that healthy beard. Oh, I'd like, um, I like this one already. Like, uh, like Martin. <laughs> oh, is yeah, it Martin? Oh, yeah. that's, that's the beard. Mm -hmm. So that's no, the beard. So that, that, that beard is dirty. Did you hear the, so, the description she gave of Elsa's beard? <laughs> <laughs> no, see... That, that beard is dirty. I, I hear men with beard like that, like they've got more germs in their beard no, than no, dogs. No, no, no. They're super clean. And you see the funny thing about me laughing at Elson? We've got the same kind of beard. <laughs> anyway, he had a beard, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. not jealous of those, so, of those guys with beards, though. I see. You understand when you gate it. So is that like your type of man right now? Somebody, that's like the first qualification he should have, like a beard? My preferences change with time. <laughs> and seasons and days. Yeah. Anywho. So, yeah, fast forward. Um, so, what's your preference right now? Tall. Mm-hmm. Um, no, 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 no. But it just has to be tall. Sally's tall. <clears throat> with a pretty smile. Yes. Look at him smiling now. And some funny type of teeth. <laughs> funny type of teeth? Yep. 
Why you want the teeth to match yours? No, 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 no. Are my teeth funny? Yeah. Okay. That's your description of my teeth, but it's okay. That disqualifies Sally, disqualifies Martin. Anywho. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, yeah. Yep. Fast forward, I, I left the marriage with two kids. Oh, that's wow. nice. Beautiful, beautiful babies. A the boy, nicest for the kids. A boy and a girl. Marriage. Oh, that's mm. nice. how, how old are they now? Uh, the boy is turning eight, July 7th. Okay. The girl is 11. You got an 11 year old baby? Yes. You look 18. Okay. But that's a good thing. You it's look, a good you look thing young. Too, yeah, you yeah. look good. You look good. So I left the marriage with two beautiful babies. Kinda. Later okay. on, I went on and um, added an extra. Though the extra I added is way older than the two. So I had three. Fast forward, I added another one. What? The tiniest one. Wh where are you picking up these kids? So I have four. The way you say you added, <laughs> kind of like toppings on a pizza. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> like I added. Bonus. Salt. Pepper. I produced three. Yeah. Yeah. And you adopted And then another. I got one, yes. Ah. Oh, okay. Like mm -hmm. adopted like from an orphanage or, or from another relationship? No, not from another relationship. Just uh, a family that I got so attached to. Mm -hmm. Right. Then there's this pretty little girl. Mm -hmm. And then I, I took over. That's very noble of you. Yeah. yeah. So Very she's yes, now she my eldest daughter. How hmm. old is she? She's 18 this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you keep all of your children. They're yes. all with you. They're all mine. Would you let her get married? Not now. You got married at 18? I went through a lot of things. I wouldn't want my daughter to go through the same. And they made you who you are today? I want a different path for my kids. I want to offer them the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to use my experience as an example. Mm -hmm. And just give them the best that I can mm -hmm. and see what they can make themselves out of what I give. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's very noble. Mm. Oh, so I'm a proud mother of four. You don't look Three like Three girls you're... and one boy. Wow. You don't I'm look I'm thinking of like... two more. Jesus. Because I want six. Is there any significance with this number that you're targeting? The I'm six? just a big fan of a big family. Or oh, you like noise in the house? I, wa I like noise. Yeah. I want people running around. So for me, who planned on just having two kids? I want some, someone banging the fridge, the door, you know. <laughs> That's how I love it. <laughs> Mr. Kanji, um, I don't know how much of your past you want to share before no, no, we get no, no, into... No, no. I, I, I only share what is already in the public. If I start sharing something else and then we'll spend the whole day. But why not? We're another family day. here. Another day. I mean, no, no one no else is here. It's just day. the three of us. So. so I only share things depending on what lessons I'm supposed to give. Yeah. I've shared my suicide story on a lot of t uh, platforms. Yeah. Because I was trying to pass a message to someone who is going through something similar. I've shared my divorce story several yeah. times because I felt at that point it was going to help someone who's going through something similar. I have shared different stories. So if we're going to discuss, ah, Muizu this, Muizu that, and then we're going to take the whole day. So basically, that's just Muizu. All right, cool. Before so, 2020. Uh huh. So now let's get to 2020. Uh huh. So nobody knew who Muizu Kanji was before 2020. No, 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 no. When you say nobody, well, okay, it's the going public. It's going to be a bit disrespecting because no, no, I no. have my family who knew me, my no, neighbors. No, no. So no, no, no. It, it's nobody, a figure of speech. It's, it's a figure of speech. Like, nobody probably outside your circle uh -huh. and your family knew who Muzukanji was. Much better. But now you're a social media sensation. Mm -hmm. And most of this happened in the year 2020. And you became like an instant Facebook celebrity in the year 2020. You get what I mean? I'm trying to imagine, what was your life like just a few years before the breakup, the public breakup with your maps? What was life like before that? It was okay. I was focused on work. I was pregnant, so I had cravings a lot of times. So that's how my life was before 2020. <laughs> and wait, uh, the marriage though. When did this happen? Like, I'm, I'm trying to put your maps in the equation now. In between the marriage and your maps, how much time difference is there between that marriage and your maps? I left the marriage end 2013. Yeah. 2013, 2014 concluded. 
I live my life. I try to raise my kids. I try to make something out of myself. And then I decided to give it a, uh, a shot again. Give what a shot? Marriage? Love. Okay. Yeah. And then it didn't work. And here we are. Why did your marriage end? What happened? Uh, that's something... I have been in the public because somebody out there brought my personal issues to the public. And I think over the years you have not heard me talk about anything concerning how my marriage ended. It should give you an explanation that I respect that man. Mm. I respect the fact that I shared the most beautiful days with him. And things didn't work out and were cool. Mm -hmm. When I visit my son in school, I video call him, I talk to yeah. him. And a few days ago, I was visiting my son in school and I was shouting at him. I shout a lot anyway. <laughs> I was shouting at him and then, you know, I was placing him on the call. I've got that relationship with him. So we talk because we are, we've got kids together. So I really can't come out here and start discussing why my marriage didn't work. Yeah. When we know one plus one is equals to two, the two is that we divorced. And then you know that one plus one means that the two couldn't agree on certain things and the marriage didn't work. So if, the you, marriage, keep, if you keep saying math, you're going to confuse this college dropout. He knows nothing about math. Oh, okay. Do you need an abacus? Let's talk about marriage. No, the one plus one that she was saying. <laughs> Moving on. Like I wasn't really interrupted by Elson for the nth okay. time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to, you know, imagine what happens now. Like, you know, the marriage is done. How does your maps come into the picture? Because that's the, that, that's the relationship now that brings you into the public domain. Okay, it's just, um, I wouldn't call it a heartbreak. Yeah. But I'll just say it's just something that happened in the public. Because trust me, even before that, I had um, people I loved. And those relationships ended. I cried, you know. I was broken. But then fast forward, moved on. But it was not in the public. So the only thing that makes everything different is the fact that it was in the public. And everyone had the right to give their own score of thought. Everyone was, uh, you know, explaining what they felt was right for them and how things were supposed to be done. So that's the reason why that heartbreak uh, maybe made a lot of noise. But if someone is going to say, was it your greatest heartbreak? I'll say no. But it was your most public. It's just public. Yeah. How, how public you, is not a special word. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Um, that's a very long, a very, very long story. Very, very long. I mean, did you bump into each other at the mall, at the pub, at church? It's a very long story. And okay. um, We've got time. I think I have learned my lesson in the past few uh, years. Yeah. If I'm going to sit and talk about how I met a specific person, I'm going to have a battalion of people coming at me and, you know. So I wouldn't want to really explain how or where, but... Did you take I him from another woman? No, 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 no. So why are you going around the, the question? Didn't. How did you meet? I didn't. Did you meet on the internet? Were we you introduced? Met like, we met like two people are supposed to meet. And how are people meant to meet? Boom. <laughs> and then you meet someone. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like witchcraft. Boom. I was about to say nah. the same, like a magic trick. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Like a yeah. genie. People meet in different ways. Uh huh. We met. It didn't work. Here we are. So what? what you Maybe you asked me who was your who I'm starting is to the why greatest it didn't work. love of your life, and then I'll tell you how I met that greatest love of my life <laughs> and how the relationship didn't work. Yeah. I'll proudly do that. How long did you date? Um, you know, it has been so long since I stopped giving. Can I use the... No, I can't use the word here. No, we'll censor it. Feel free. Okay. It's been quite some time since I stopped giving a fuck. About? About everything that happened. That I don't even keep track of what Who happened. the relationship? I know where your question is going. Maybe you want to ask... Um, is it true that you fell pregnant at three weeks? No, but now that you bring it up, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Wait. Who left the relationship? He left. What did you are do? You, are, you, are you bitter about it? No. You sound it. No. You sure? You don't know me much to know that I'm bitter or not. Uh, just based off your responses. Uh, straightforward responses. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. None of the responses you've given were, were straightforward. They're like okay. going round and round. How did you yeah, meet? I yeah, I have to agree. You've noticed that, right? Okay, then you? that should give you an impression that I don't 
find pleasure in talking about that part of my past. But, ah. but it was so public and you knew that coming if it was here so it was pub- going to If be it was so public, then I, I'm under the impression that the public has all the details. I don't. <laughs> Take time to research. I am right now by asking Please you. Please do. By asking you. No, it's in the public domain. You can simply Google. All right, cool. Now, yeah. you were talking about he left. So, why do you feel, did he explain to you like why he left? The relationship didn't work. Like what the mechanic? You what have what? to be in a place where you're happy. So he just wasn't happy. Obviously. What weren't you doing? I were you giving answers like you're giving now to him? Because if you were, I can see why he left. Sure. Yeah. You are a man. It's okay to see. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, you were explaining. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You're explaining why you feel maybe he left. Like what? What weren't you doing? Right. Okay. People are going to be in a relationship where they feel they're comfortable. Yeah. People are going to be in a relationship where they feel they're at home. People are going to be in a relationship where they feel that they're appreciated. And trust me, you can be people, I can be people at any time. Yeah. So if you're in a relationship and you don't feel the way you're supposed to, it's okay to live. You are not tied to one a particular person. If you don't feel comfortable What's with this person, phone number? We need to figure out why he left. Okay? Yeah, if you're not we'll comfortable with this person, yeah. it's okay to leave. And after that happens, we respect decisions that people make. Okay? And that's exactly what I did. Why did I do that? It was not the first relationship that, you know, didn't work out. That didn't work out. Yeah. And that's okay. You have to be in a place where you're appreciated. You have to be in a place where you feel loved. And trust me, I'm not the person that can give someone everything. Okay? The way that I can love you is not the same way that I can love him. Okay? I'm just giving you an example. I can't love you. You like that, girl? I just like your shirt. So. Oh, you like my shirt? Yeah. Because I think I can print it better. I look look better better outside my shirt. Wait, I want to tell her how I look better without my shirt on. As you were. I'm Mr. imagining Kanji. there's a one pack there, not a six pack. <laughs> of course, man. <laughs> six packs are for those that are unemployed, Pubu. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Kanji, yeah, you were saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, we cannot sit and start talking about why someone left or why someone, uh, you know, why this relationship didn't work out. Yeah. Even me today, if I'm seeing someone and I'm seeing certain things that I feel I cannot hold on to them for a long time, it's okay for me to live. And that's what happened. And then of all your breakups, this was the, the first public one. Did you feel any you know, shame or embarrassment because that breakup was so public? Embarrassment, no. Yeah? Shame? But it was just the cyberbullying that came with it. It was the what? The cyberbullying that came with it. Wow. Tell yep. us about that though. It was a point where, you know, you know how Zambian social media is. People want to create stories. People want, you know, they, want, they, they would write up anything for numbers. And that's what exactly was happening with me. Mm. Yeah, there were issues. No, uh, uh, she gets pregnant for every man that she meets. You know, because people also think that I've got four baby daddies, four kids with four different oh, baby daddies. Wow. That's in the public. It's okay. It, okay. Do you? I've got four kids. Two from the marriage? Yes. Mm-hmm. One, One from, from after the marriage yeah. and yes. then the adopted one. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's okay with me. Yeah. yeah. I'm no, it's good because wanna, you're, you're setting your own narrative. You know what I mean? And exactly. we're not going to judge you. Exactly. Yeah. So then, uh, people uh, wrote different stories about me. And people were reading. People were giving their own opinions. People were commenting. And for me, that's the only thing that I would say it was tough. Because uh, just seeing how people were coming out, others would say, okay, this girl is ugly. You know, this girl, they would, they would sometimes would get my, my old pictures. Sometimes they would get my, 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 you know, certain pictures. Were you that type that grows up ugly and then you blossom into a pretty flower later on in life? I was never ugly. <laughs> I always <laughs> looked... Are you ugly? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, no. Just, she, knows what I, she knows what I mean. I know what you're like saying. Like there are people who... You look at their past, uh, photos from, on Facebook like from 10, 15 years like, ago. Like who? Okay, I'll give myself an example. Well, you still are ugly. Well, I'm, I'm way better than I was back in the day. <laughs> oh, really? You look worse ah, come on, let's kid now. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you scared the kids now, didn't you? I know, you? I know. <laughs> Fucking Cosimodo. Anyway, yeah. Wait, so, so, so here's what I want to find out. Okay. Social media can be really toxic, especially with the cyberbullying that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. 
there's a lot of there's a lot of damage that it does to somebody's not only um, self esteem, the way they look at themselves, but mental health as a whole. Oh yeah. That coupled with the fact that you're a mom and you've got an 18 year old child who also has got access to social media, how did you navigate that? Like just staying healthy mentally and also parenting your kids because now you're not just looking out for yourself but these kids are taking it hard that these people are being mean to to my mom you know what i mean oh yeah how do you how do you navigate that okay firstly i would say it wasn't easy why am i saying it wasn't easy because um sometimes my eldest daughter would get affected if she reads something about mm. me and then she would say can you imagine what the what they are writing. Can you imagine what these people are saying? But then, with time, she understood that people will wake up, okay, make their own posts. People will wake up, write their own stories, even without confirming. So I think now she's cool. Now they are cool. All right. Yeah. And yourself, how did you manage to either block it out or manage it at the very least? I think I just grew to understand that People are always going to criticize. Mm -hmm. People are always going to give uh, their school of thought on different things. And you will not expect everyone to love you. You're not oxygen. Okay? You're not money. You're not money. Look, they, they killed so Jesus and he didn't okay. do anything to anybody. Exactly. So I don't wake up every morning and say, okay, I want him to love me. I want her to love me. I want this person to feel good about me. I wake up and I want to feel good about myself. That's a face thing. So if someone is going to come to me and say, okay, Mwizu has got a big forehead. You know, she's got a big head. Everyone in my family has got big heads. If you see my siblings, <laughs> mine Rihanna's is even got small. a big forehead. And look at it's her. okay. Yeah. She's, no, I'm saying, you know, look at her. She's, she's beautiful, right? And a billionaire too. Terabanks. So, um, Terabanks. Yeah. I don't really feel bad if someone is going... And with time, I think I have equally changed. Because... Mm. Um, now, you can call me anything. I'll not be bothered. But that's come with you time. You can call right? me a prostitute. You can call me uh, somebody who has kids every year. It's okay. Or oh, after three weeks of being in a relationship. It's okay because <laughs> only yeah. me understand me. And only me know where I'm coming from. Only me know that this person I am today is not the person I used to be yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I know my growth. I know where I'm coming from. I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So, the negativity, the criticism really doesn't gate to me now. Mm -hmm. But if someone is going to come out and um, say rubbish about my kids, I go head on. If someone is going to come and, you know, uh, uh, there are certain things that I, I will not entertain. And I, 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 I've taken quite a number of people to court and I've been paid for defamation. Wow. Yep. Story for another day. So there are just certain things that I will not entertain because I know that I'm raising girls. And you know that the internet doesn't forget. If someone is going to come out and say, mm. okay, Muizu was doing A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and my girls are there, they're watching and they see I don't do anything, maybe it confirms that it's true or not. So then, there are certain situations that I'll become petty and just play around it. Uh, you know, I think the worst um, people when it comes to, like you've said, you know, people bullying you over the internet, cyber bullies and all, I think the worst are those who make assumptions and turn them into facts and oh, they'll yeah. post things oh, yeah. about things that they think mm -hmm. you're going through mm -hmm. or make conclusions about maybe what was happening between you and your maps. What was the worst you ever saw in your life personally? Did you see any rumors that people you know, cooked up that were so far from the truth? Uh, a lot of them. Yeah, what was, what was the worst that got a to you? A lot of them. But one that really got to me was... Uh, this morning I wake up and I see a headline on one of the pages on Facebook that said uh, Mwizukanji hid her kids. She did what? I was hiding my kids. Oh, crap. I remember that one, that you hid your kids from your man. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, okay. Who does that? So, I think that's the worst. But everything else, nap. Nah. The kids i don't know wait okay wait a minute <laughs> i don't know you, you, you dated don't a guy know. for how long again 
I know where you're going. And you mean tell me you know, he, you know you, you, do you know don't the reason you that you, yeah. you know the reason why I'm going to say I don't know? Yeah. Because he is the person that started everything. He did an interview and said that. So I don't want to go back to a point in my life where I'll start saying, "No, she said, she said." So I'll simply close the issue by saying, "I don't know." How long did you you see, you didn't give us the answer to this again when I said, how long did you date? Because it still gives and context I not, to... If, I would really appreciate if maybe we moved to another topic and talk about oh, something else. Just give else. us a number, please. No, Two no, years. No. Just, let's just move to another All right, cool. Moving I on. Know, I know yeah. why I'm avoiding or this. this. Yes. It might affect other people. It, there are a lot of people that are going to be affected and it will be like, everything is starting from scratch. Are you like dating right now? Huh? Are you dating right now? Oh, yeah. I'm human. It's She's been wearing a ring on the... I'm human and I'm not. Too bad. So uh, you, you're engaged. I see you've got a ring on your finger. Do you think that that would affect your relationship right now? There's a man that entertains me and loves me. Oh, he, he entertains you? Yeah. That's a good thing. I'm trashy. I'm trashy. <laughs> I'm sarcastic. Yeah. But and very few Zambian men can... There's someone who loves me, so yeah. Just the way you are. Because yep. very few Zambian men are going to handle such a lady. Like sarcastic trashy but the guy is zambian no i'm just saying very few that's why i'm saying you're lucky very few anyway <laughs> no i'm not lucky <laughs> anyway moving on like you want us to move on now oh, um dick. just you know concluding on what we've been talking about the past 10 minutes so much happened to you in that period you know cyber bullying and all but oh, yeah? you sort of turned lemons into lemonade you turned tragedy into triumph how, how did you get into that mindset of turning all your pain into you know Joy. Life is about grabbing opportunities. Okay? Yeah. I had the numbers, and for me, it was just an opportunity to take advantage of that and make money out of it. You seem to be making quite a lot of bank. No, 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 no. I'm not. Trust me, when I came here, when you guys were delaying, I just had a meeting and closed the deal. Oh, yeah, we noticed. We, we noticed, yeah. yeah. yeah you were smiling right so much. The money was good, yeah? Mm -hmm. not, not you guys were late. One person was late. <laughs> yes, when one, person, when one person was late. So for me, it can be business anywhere. And everything is happening because I have the numbers. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just about taking advantage of whatever it is that life hands to you. He thinks he's special because he went to Australia. So he shows up whatever time that he wants to show up. Oh, shame. Imagine that. Um... Just one more question about this issue before we move to the next issue. Okay. You mentioned defamation and made money. How much money did you make? I'm, I'm thinking of suing someone as well. It depends Ooh. on your demands. How much did you get though? Uh, <laughs> it depends on your demands. Muizu, come on. Just Enough. a number. It, the, the case is done and dusted. Enough. So above 500,000. Um, so these people, after I gave them a figure, then they said, no, right now we're going through financial challenges. Yeah. So... <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Let's reduce it. Who, 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 who? To 500,000? No. More? Less. But above 250? Less. No, no further questions, Your Honor. Who are you, who are you trying yeah. to sue? No, I was just trying to fish. Okay. fish. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Can we talk about your mental health, though, after all this? You know, uh, the end of any relationship can leave one feeling, you know, humiliated and all that. You know, rejected, embarrassed, exposed... Um, feelings of sadness, you know, can vary in, f in form. Can we talk about your mental state after the breakup? And of course, you realize now that you can make money off it. But what was your mental state health like in that period? So before I even realized that uh, I can use the numbers for money and yeah. everything, there was so much, uh, there was so much bullying going on, and I just felt like I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do it. So I decided, I planned the perfect suicide for myself. That should explain to me, to you guys, that yeah. it was actually a very uh, rough time for me. It was very, very rough. So I took a drive. I put a food tank mm. and I, I, I just had plans. I wanted to just drive off a cliff, you know, these no. SeaWorld movies like, oh. And then, then you drive and then you drop, you know, and then that's yeah. the end of you. Maybe because I was watching too much Z World, but yeah. Yeah, I think you should. I shouldn't. was so um I was so devastated and I wasn't that broken because 
a relationship didn't work, but I was that broken because of everything that, you know, people were saying. And then I thought, no, I couldn't do this, you know. I can't, I can't, I can't stand this. I just wanted to end it all. Everyone knows how that story ended. Yeah. No, I, I didn't do the Z world because I'm not a ghost. I'm flesh. Yeah, no, <laughs> I didn't still here. die. No, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. So, but what made you change your mind? I had quite a breakdown? number. No, 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 no. It was in perfect condition. I take care of my cars. Mm -hmm. I service them. I buy tires mm -hmm. when I have to. Mm -hmm. I check my oils before I start. So, I check so what my happened? water. Where did you change your mind? I'm happy. And I still did. had a full tank anyway. Right. But then you know the stretch. Uh, between Lusaka and um, and Luangwa, mm -hmm. network is a little bit of a challenge. All right. So then, the time I reached Luangwa, I realized that there were a lot of people that were reaching out to me. Uh, I had family, I had friends, you know. I oh, had wow. people that spoke to me. That's like the reason they why. Your phone. Yes, that's the reason why I strongly feel if someone is going through a certain situation, it's very important for you to find someone that you can talk to, uh -huh. because that really helped me. Do you remember the first person who called you? My dad was calling. Everyone was calling. My daughter was calling. Was it because of what they were reading or were they calling for a different reason? I was so naive. I don't know if I was naive or something. But then I put up a status and then I, I, I put a voice note in the family group. Do you remember what the voice note said or what the status like, said? Oh, I'm tired of this. I just want to die. You used, oh, wow. And it, you know, I was so broken but I was using English. So if those people knew, maybe they were like, ah, Okay, maybe she's not serious, but yeah. Why? Because you're using English. Mm -hmm. You know, if it hits you deep, it's ah, we hear not my name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's the way it, it sounded. It sounded because it was in English. Yes, but then you know, so at first I think they didn't even take it serious. Yeah. Until they called, they started checking up on me, and then they found no, I left home, and then when I was leaving home, I left my cards, I left my, you know, I I, I left instructions with the nanny, the one who was taking care of the baby. Yeah. And they were told I all gave, this. I, I even gave my, I even gave them some money to buy her stuff. So you know, like a lot of strange things that happened, and people just added them together. And then they said no. She's saying bye. She's saying yeah. So people started calling. When I reached at some point, I listened to the voice note. There were a lot of messages. There were people from the diaspora calling me. What? People from home. You know, different people. I'm more curious. So then I realized that okay, yeah. in as much as there are going to be people that are all negative. There are uh, going to be people that really don't care about what's happening with you. Yeah. There are people that do there care. There are people that do care. So I thought, okay, I think it's worth living for. There are people for those that, that do care. Yeah. Did you ever consider therapy? Zambia? Yes, Zambia. Therapy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're not in ASA or some English country. I'm so happy we you're don't saying preach, this right now. We don't preach therapy in Zambia. Why yeah. not? I don't know. I'm not the president or something. The president doesn't have to there push have to be, for therapy. Um, I'm not the president of depression, not of the country. There's no president of depression. So a point I'm trying to bring up is we have not done uh, so much to help people that are going through such. That's what we're doing right now. You and I are talking about it. I hope. I so hope. you never consider therapy? No. So he, Kalinga brought it up. Therapy... Um, Therapy should be something that someone is going to suggest to you. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you can't be so broken and crying and think therapy. I hear you. You can't. No, I hear you. If you have hit rock bottom, trust me, you can't. Therapy is the last thing, absolutely. Yeah. I'm bringing up therapy in the point of your life where you made the realization that it is not worth it for me to kill myself. Oh, yeah. And you probably turned your car around. You are still in this place where you're broken. You've got your kids, you've got your father, you've got your parents to live for, mm -hmm. but you're still broken, right? So in order for you to, at the very least, function properly, you need therapy. I've said this countless times. I have, I've had far less traumatic experiences as you've had, okay. but I go to therapy weekly. I feel something as small and in quotes insignificant as maybe just being fired from a job mm -hmm. could have consequences you might not know oh yeah do you get what i mean i've so, been fired before so i know there you go so yeah. i feel every single person doesn't matter what they're going through in life whether they know they need therapy or they don't 
I feel it is very imperative for you to go sit, speak to somebody about it. You actually might be diagnosed with a lot that you did not realize that you've had. So what you're saying is absolutely true. When people yeah. speak about mental health and therapy, immediately you think Chinama, you think I'm crazy, mm -hmm. I'm cuckoo, mm -hmm. way, way is far from that. Oh yeah? Yeah. So I, I say this to Oscar Chavula uh, after the death of, um, of Zach, where he would just wake up, in, this, is this very strong person, right? He would wake up in the middle of the night and just start crying. And then he would tell himself, look, I'm a man. Man the fuck up. Whereas men still go through stuff like that. So I told him, dude, you need to go to therapy oh, yeah? and so do the rest of your stuff. So it's the same thing that I'll say to you. You've gone through quite a lot from the divorce mm -hmm. to everything else that you have. Consider it. Go to one or two sessions. If you feel it's not for you, then it's not. But I highly recommend it. Okay. Thanks for the recommendation. But I think I'm, 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 I have people I talk to now. Don't know at a professional level. Yeah. But I have people I, I talk to. Yep. So I'm I'm really curious because I understand the relationship between a father and a daughter. Mm -hmm. What did your father say to you in those moments that you know made you change your mind? He was the great. He was uh, one of the greatest uh, support system. Yeah. It will be a year uh, next month since he died. Oh, sad. Yep. Condolences. So. Um, yep. Yeah. What did he say to you? A lot of beautiful things. A lot of beautiful things. Yeah. All right. We're not doing he supported a lot yeah. of things I did. And um, he gave me the best advice. Sometimes I just check my, I just check my messenger. And yeah. Sometimes he would, you know, send me messages. If he sees there's something going on, he will, you know, he will write me something. And, you know, when I read, I'll laugh about it. Even now, I still read the conversations. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, he was a great man. It was the greatest loss for me. Yeah. But I still celebrate him. What's the single most thing that reminds you of him? Like, the biggest thing that reminds you of him? Something that you're at the mall, you see, and you're like, Dad. <laughs> My wine. Your wine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This woman. Yeah, my wine. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he would call me and said, <laughs> he would call me. He was very loud. Yeah. Like, um, when he calls, and then he said, ah, ningu kwatile, she wine. You know, he would speak such, some deep bimba. Yeah. So even if I'm busy, I would still go home, and then sometimes if it's not wine, then it's flying fish. Would you like to, would you like to take a short break? You all right there? No? You look teary. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You sure? I look teary. <laughs> I think she's making me all emotional now. Like, she's reminding me of my dad as well. You know what I mean? My dad mm. passed away, like, what, eight years ago now? Mm -hmm. Serious? Yeah. How have you managed? And for me, like, in my case, um, it's one of those where my dad had, like, I think six strokes before he, he left. Mm. Yeah. And the last no, day... Kind of strokes. Yeah. The last day I saw my dad... Um, I actually borrowed my mom's car like a day before because it's bigger. I needed to transport some sound system and stuff. So I go to Solwezi on a Sunday. Sunday night, I come back. I head to my flat. Monday morning, I'm supposed to be on radio at 6. So like around 5.30, I drive to my parents' house. I leave the car and mom was in the corridor. My dad is in the bedroom like on his bed. Like, you know, half of his body wasn't working at this point because the stroke was that bad. So I even waved to him saying, Dad, I'll see you later. And he looks at me, smiles, waves, even gives me a thumbs up. And I leave the house, head to work, and I'm on radio doing the breakfast show, making all this noise. The breakfast show starts at 6. At 7, my mom calls crying, like, your dad has just left us. I left that guy okay, and I was just about to start reading the news. This is like 4th August 2014. I'm about to just start reading the news and my mom calls me, which is why a lot of times they tell us to turn our phones off when I'm going on radio because mm -hmm. you, you can get such news and it just disturb the whole flow of the yeah. program. You know what I mean? So for me, that, that's what I went through and the conversations I had with my dad like in the last few days, I can relate exactly to what you're talking about. You want a hug? That would be nice. Come here. <laughs> you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You want a hug? 
I need a punch. She needs a punch. <laughs> yeah. Mwizu Kanji, we, we must ask death, this question. Death mm. is one of those... One of those things that really makes our mortality so apparent. Yeah, so final. It is. I was actually, imagine, I was actually driving from Kariako. Yeah. I was coming from... That's in Tanzania. Yeah. I was, Salaam, from, yeah. I, was, yeah I was coming from Tanzania. And then I called, you know, I was showing in places. I was video calling. Yeah. I was showing, the time I was driving through the park, we're having that conversation. I was reaching, then he told me, I'll sleep when you reach uh, uh, Nakonde. Yeah. So I was reaching Nakonda around two, around zero two. He called, we spoke, and then he told me, oh, there are a number of relatives in Nakonde that would love to see you. So maybe tomorrow you can check up on them. He sent me the contacts. I even met a few of them. I started driving. So the stretch between Nakonde and Isoka, because uh, come, I come from Isoka, our village yeah. is in Isoka. So I wanted to pass through home, and then I started calling, and he was not picking. So then I called again, I called again, I called again. And then, I was like, and then you know like, most of the times when I call him, I, if he doesn't pick my call, I'll ask him, what for me, I'm on family. Mm. You know, then he said, ah, no, 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 I was busy. I was doing, then I kept on calling, I was not picking. It was strange. And then I was just thought, no, he's sick. What, what? So when I reached, I reached in the night, because I spent a night there, the following morning, the, the cars were cleared, they started coming. Yeah. I was reaching around 21, 22 from Nakonde. Early in the morning, I went to check up on him, yeah. went to the hospital. Fast forward, July 15th, he passed. May he rest in peace. One He's year resting. next month. Yep. Muzo Kanji, before we all start you know, crying and hugging each other, I think let's uh, change the topic quickly. Who do you think is killing it right now as a Facebook influencer besides yourself? In terms of what? Gossip? Or oh, I just, just feel is, is, is doing impact. a good job of being a social media social influencer. Impact. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Dr. Lulu. Dr. Lulu? Yeah. I need to get my social media game. You also don't know Dr. Lulu? Martin? No? No. Not Lulu Hangala, no. Dr. Dr. Lulu. Lulu? Yeah, you can check her. You can check her. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Can you rank these uh, female artists in order, like, not the worst, mm -hmm. just from bottom to top? Uh, you can put them in any order. Clear Eyes Queen, Bombshell, Seven. Who's your number one, two, three? Why haven't you added Mampi? Because uh, these are rappers. Oh, rappers. Yeah. I love Seven. She's a vibe. The Coppola Queen. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a very big fan. I can oh, okay. even do a bit of some lines. You can even do a few. Uh, please, feel free. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. But I'm a big fan of Zavin. Cleo, then um, Bombshell. So in that order, Zavin, Cleo, Bombshell. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what's the worst thing you've had to do to make money before you hit it big? The worst thing you've ever done to make money? I don't really have anything I would describe worse because uh, if something is giving me money, then it's something that I, I worship. That you worship? Yeah. Like what? I do street <clears throat> sales sometimes. Yeah. I sell stuff in the streets. That's something that I enjoy. It gives me money. Others will look at me and say, oh, okay, no, you know. But I enjoy it. It's Just not because the worst. something is giving you money doesn't mean you should be doing it. For me, if it is giving me money and it's legal, I'll do it. If you want me to clean your shoe, I'll clean your shoe. If you're paying me. So how much would you charge for that? For cleaning his shoe? Yeah, like his sneakers. Maybe a hundred. hundred kwacha? Yeah. <laughs> look, look at Elson pushing the mic away. <laughs> we are doing this right now. You know he's got cash in his pocket right now. That's, one, that, that's for one sneaker, Elson. It's on the seat, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm missing a few. <laughs> uh, Kanji... You're now moving in, you know, high circles. Yeah, celebrity, mm -hmm. social media influencer and all that. Oh, yeah. What has been the most awkward celebrity encounter you've had so far? The awkward what? Most awkward. Oh, and she, ish, look at this now. You're giving She's me the paying you to do what? To not to clean. To pay me. To clean my shoe. Yes. What was your question again? Uh, can we finish this transaction first? What's happening here? You're paying him. 
to pay you to, pay to clean his shoes. Yes. Else, then get the hundred. Pay the lady, please. It would be disrespectful if he didn't. No, it would be disrespe- it would be disrespectful if she cleans my shoe. So what are we doing this hundred kwacha now? <laughs> it's going back where it came from. It's going from. back. All right, cool. I was saying yeah. you're now moving in high-profile circles. What okay. has been the most awkward celebrity encounter so far? The worst encounter? No. Awkward. With a celebrity? Yeah. Mm. Oh, f- okay. That would take some time for me to think about. All right, cool. Moving because on. I'm not, I'm not really in these places where celebrities yeah. are. I think you've noticed. Where, where do you chill from? I don't attend. Most of the times I chill from home. Ah, okay. Yeah. What would you do if you accidentally sent a sex message meant to your ex, your maps? To start with, I don't even have his number. Ah, oh, serious? Yeah. And they were praising you about, you know, congratulating so him. So it, it was on Facebook. Right. Yeah, okay. so there's no possibility of such a thing happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have his number. So I can't even accidentally do that. Are you friends with any of your exes? Yeah. Okay. We are. Just not this particular one? No. Muzakan, just to close off the interview, what message do you have to your, you know, your loyal fans and fans of that Z podcast? You can look into this camera and just give a shout out to them and say whatever you want to them. Okay. I love you guys. I really appreciate. Oh. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> I really appreciate how much you support me, how much you stand with me. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much. I am where I am because of your support. Without you, I'm nobody. So I just want to appreciate. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.